Okay, you're on. I'm on now? Okay. All right, so this is, uh, uh, basically I have 1984 Mercedes 300 TD. It's a California version, and it's shifting poorly. So I'm looking for bad, va I'm looking for vacuum leaks first. Because if you got clean automatic transmission fluid that's blood red, and, uh, and there's no burned phenolic smell in it, and it's shifting improperly, it probably has to do with vacuum. So we've got a lot of different things here. This is the main line that goes from the vacuum pump. Uh, to the uh, power brake booster, it has broken terminals on it. I'm gonna, I'm replacing this valve, uh, and then I've taken everything out of this California, California 84 300 turbo diesel wagon, which is different than 49 state considerably. As a matter of fact, the 49 state version has a thing called a 3-2 valve up on the valve cover. This one doesn't have that. It has a place for it on the valve cover, which I can show in another video. But basically, it does have one of this shifter control valve uh, out loud. This is a 123-070-0046. I see a lot of them online for sale. They have no idea if they're good or not. So I've taken the thing apart completely in order to indicate how it works. And I'm forensically reverse engineering it. This mechanism goes in here like this. This little thing you may recognize goes on the top. There's a couple of uh, little tabs on it, and they push down and snap in here and here to hold hold this unit together. This is a vacuum diaphragm pod. It is sealed with an O-ring into this chamber because basically this switch has two vacuum ports, the one on the top and the one on the side. This chamber has to be sealed for vacuum. The first thing I did when I took off the two screws, by the way, this is just a support for the bearing uh, on this uh, throttle uh, co uh, connected uh, uh, push rod. Okay, the first thing I discovered is that there was dirt all along this bottom edge in here. The chamber is not sealed. Over years, it's warped. You can see a little bit of cracking along the edge there. So what I did is I took some uh, flexible diaphragm material. This is not the reinforced stuff. It's actually stretchy so that I know that it will, uh, uh, you know, conform when I draw it down tight. So I made a little gasket here. This will go back on, on here. And now this chamber will be sealed. The curiosity is, is what the hell does this thing do? Well, I don't really know. But it's in the system, and it doesn't do what I expect it to do. So here's, here's the story. This is O-ring seal here. When this is locked into place, this, this chamber is sealed. So what the heck does this little thing do here? Watch this. When it's all the way down, there's a coil spring in here that has just enough tension to push this all the way up, to push this diaphragm all the way up. Inside here is a spring, a conical spring, and there's a ball bearing down in there that breaks the vacuum on the diaphragm. So watch this. This is a, has a good diaphragm. Boy, I'm glad because I don't want to have to unpinch this thing and uh, open it up and put a new diaphragm in because it's pretty delicate. So here we got our handheld vacuum pump. I'm going to take a piece of clay and put it on here to close that orifice and pump it up. And look at this. Hey. Hey. Diaphragm's good. Congratulations, it holds. But the curious thing is, is that, uh, let's see, where's that? Here's a pair of grip pliers. The curious thing is, is that there's actually a pin in here. And when this is drawn all the way up, the pin lifts that ball off its seat. So to prove that, I'm holding it so, so that the, it cannot be drawn in. And look at what happens here. In other words, that ball bearing leaks. Now, how do I know it leaks? Because, watch this. If I take a little screw and push it in here and hold the ball down, well, just a minute ago, I was getting it to stop completely. Because I was thinking maybe it's a calibrated leak. Well, it is depending on how accurately I push the ball down here. Let me make sure everything is tight here. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to clean it a little. And once again, right now, it might be a calibrated leak. 
But why, when there's a pin on the inside to lift it? Well, when it goes all the way up. So here, let me make sure I'm all the way up. Yeah. So it's no, it's not going to go into the range to pull the ball off its seat. Once again, I'm pressing the ball. You know, this goes down and actually touches the tip of the ball here. There we go. There I go. It's very tricky, but if I hold pressure at the right angle on this ball, that ball holds pressure indicating that it's supposed to hold pressure. It's not a calibrated leak. So that means I got to take that spring out of there and reseat that ball. Once I do, then this thing will operate correctly again in that, uh, of course, there's an O-ring seal on this to seal the chamber. It goes down in here. Uh, we can press the lock ring back in at a later point. It'll lock the O-ring against this lower chamber. The lower chamber is like that. And, oh, well, I can, I, I want to show you the lift pin in action here. So right now, if I hold it about like this, here's our calibrate, there's our calibrated leak on the ball again, or maybe not calibrated leak, I'm going to find out. But when this goes all the way up like that, the ball is now lifted off of its seat, and it's a complete blow through. That means it's basically connected this vacuum line to this vacuum line through the chamber when, uh, uh, when the linkage is all the way up like that. And then when it's down like that, uh, uh, it, it, it's less consequential. Now, what this all does, I don't know, but I do know that it leaks and it leaks. So I'm fixing the leak around the perimeter with a gasket. And I'm going to uh, reseat the ball in there to make sure that it seats properly. And then this thing should be functioning again like new. So we have other vacuum devices I'm testing as well that are all uh, uh, in the system. They have to do both with the EGR valve and with uh, uh, shift solenoids. So uh, that's my story. And I'll let you know more later. Okay. Et cetera.